Lucis Trust, a non-profit, non-political, and non-sectarian organization on the roster of the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations and concerned with the establishment of world cooperation and goodwill, presents Inner Sight with your host, Robert Anderson. He, with Sarah and Dale McKechnie, President and Vice President of Lucis Trust, will discuss philosophical and spiritual topics essential to everyday life. Now here's your host, Robert Anderson. Welcome. Inner sight is simply seeing that which is always present but not yet fully recognized. You have, within you, the ability to see yourself and the world around you in a new way with new eyes. So stay with us and together we'll look at the world and ourselves with inner sight. Our topic for today, thoughts on death and immortality. Part 1, and before we explore this topic, I'd like to say a few words about Alice Bailey, founder of the Lucis Trust. Lucis Trust sponsors this show. Alice Bailey also wrote 24 books of esoteric philosophy, and those 24 books are the main inspiration for the dialogue that you hear on this show. The following thought is also from the works of Alice Bailey. Death, if we could but realize it, is one of the most practiced activities. We have died many times and shall die again and again. Just as soon as we know ourselves to be souls, we shall no longer know death. If death is one of our most practiced activities, why do we approach the subject with so little understanding? I, uh, it's a good question. If we're such experts in it, how come we're so uh, mm. ignorant? Mm. I think there are probably different levels to our awareness, and on our higher levels of consciousness, we, we are um, more... Um, <coughs> confident and more experienced in the process of death and we have to trust that when our time comes we will summon up some of that expertise to make our transition. People can surprise you when they are getting ready to um, relinquish the body. They can draw upon reservoirs of wisdom and of um, serenity and of far-sightedness looking toward the future that can be quite surprising even in people that you think are not uh, the kind that would be ready to make the transition with so much uh, aplomb. But another reason that we are so uncertain about having lived before is that our consciousness when we are living in physical bodies and expressing ourselves through personalities with emotions and thoughts and drives and desires and urges and fears and hopes and all of that works against the memory of the soul's attainment from past lifetimes. The soul exists on the level of the higher consciousness which is abstract and which is concerned with universals whereas the personality is concerned with the mundane, the here and now and with me, me, me. It's all about me and that's the antithesis of the soul's awareness which is universal and inclusive. So when you think of it in those terms it's no wonder that um, our personality consciousness focused on terra firma doesn't remember much about past lifetimes. No, I think that's the missing element, uh, the soul, and it's not, I mean, we, we use the term soul a lot in uh, religious and spiritual teachings, but... Uh, I think too often we, people <coughs> use it as if it's a higher, finer, nicer version of themselves. <coughs> right, it isn't really identified as um, an immortal being that um, spends a short time here in this lifetime, but, uh, you know, it continues on life after life. It says, as it says in the quote there, we have died many times. And it's the soul that, uh, it, the factor that's missing in our discussion, or any discussion, in it, that's why we lack really understanding, I think, is because the, the, we don't factor in this factor of the soul, uh, 
enough to understand, give us understanding. There's also the question of who do we mean by we? We have died many times. I think automatically the mind thinks, well, I, the personality, I, Sarah, I, Dale, I, Robert, have died many times. Yes, but it's the innermost indwelling higher self, the soul that has died, not our personality, Robert or Dale or Sarah. We are the limited expression on the personality level of a unique uh, and not particularly highly spiritually evolved entity in our personalities. When we say we have died many times, we are speaking of ourselves as the soul. And I think for a very long time in spiritual development, there's little contact with that higher, inner, finer being. Right. That this this being is the immortal part of us, and it's that which does continue on. And I think we have to give it more of a place in our our discussion and our our uh, understanding, and try to try to understand what this soul is more than uh, than we do now because it's it's the uh, crucial factor that uh, uh, gives us a better understanding of what death really is i think another factor mm-hmm. that works against our um, sense of confidence and of experience in the process of dying is that modern life is so thoroughly focused on the material plane <laughs> My understanding of ancient times and of earlier civilizations was that they had a very close connection with the abstract realm, often in quite a mystical, psychic sense that wasn't particularly um, evolved spiritually, but they did have a sense of the inner subjective side of life, which they tried to placate through rites and ceremonies. The world was a very powerful and scary place for uh, early civilizations, and um, that probably uh, developed an awareness that there was a, a, another dimension to life that was powerful, uncontrollable, really meaningful. But now, with the growth of science and the human mind, we are more in control of the uh, realms that we live in. We have gained quite a lot of control over the weather, over um, managing uh, living conditions and um, that's been all to the good but it's also deepened our focus on the outer realms and another factor is that the whole process of dying is no longer really a part of a lot of people's experience in, in speaking in terms of family and friends and so on I can remember my mother often referring to the death of her grandmother coming home, I think, from Christmas Eve services in the sleigh. This was in rural America in the winter. They rode in a sleigh to church, came home, and the grandmother died Uh, on the way home. She had a stroke. And that was the frequent experience, I think, of a lot of people, that the older members of the family died and were laid out in the parlor, and you had a visitation and a funeral. And um, it was part of living. Now people who are ill are whisked off to the intensive care unit out of sight, and we don't really see them die. No, and often when they do die, it's there's a, a, a medical team surrounding them, mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. pounding on their chest to try to get their heart to function again. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not the quiet, peaceful <laughs> death that one would hope to have Mm -hmm. and unfortunately there's um, so I think science and all its wonders um, can be can be very a a good place to uh, try to understand the death but also I think science sometimes gets in the way because um, it seems to be the promotion of the life of this physical body at all means Mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily what the intention of the soul is no it's one of those Mm. areas of life where we've developed more expertise than wisdom i think and i'm sure that a lot of the medical professionals are deeply aware of this and um, i hope that in the 
decades to come that we will gain more of a sense of